Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna do the Trouty uh, Triangular Bag from Aura Rosa Patterns. It is so unique. Um, definitely unlike anything I've ever seen before. I love it. Um, it has a front pocket here. It's huge, goes for days. It also has a main access zipper pocket. That is the entire triangle part of the bag. Inside you have a slip pocket and a zippered pocket. Let's open. So this is it. Oh, and my favorite part of this bag is this really awesome connect uh, strap. So you get to learn how to do that. All this origami construction here. I love it. I hope you have so much fun. If anyone has any questions, don't feel free. Ugh, do feel free to drop them below. Um, have fun. All right. I began by prepping some things like putting the uh, line down the centers and putting double sided tape on. Um, the handles and the connectors. I've got my name tag laid out. All my pieces are marked as she s shows you in the pattern. Um, <clears throat> I'm going ahead and using canvas. It's fused with um, Dolce Fuse, which is similar to SF 101. Um, only there's no fleece because I'm using waterproof canvas. So I think I'm going to have enough structure between the two to do that. I've also got just a little bit of vinyl here. So let's go ahead and begin with the handles and the connectors. Also real quick, all of my pieces are already separated into the piles that she tells you to. It's very important to do the piles and the, all the markings because this can get confusing. But if you follow along and have all your markings and your piles, it's really easy. Okay, so first up, you're gonna wanna dig out your connector and your handles. Put your lines down the center if you haven't already. Put your double-sided tape on. Grab your D-rings, your two swivels, and your strap ends as well. Go ahead and pull the double-sided tape off. Uh, I'm gonna do the hand or the connector real quick and fold everything to the center, the two long sides to the center. We've got a strip like this. We're going to top stitch both long edges on this piece and the matching other connector. We'll also go ahead and take the double sided tape off our handle. These handles are pretty neat. Of course they are. Alexis, her brain is just magical. Always doing something different. So for this one, we're going to fold both long edges into the center and then we'll fold it one more time so you can't see your, your raw edges this time. So this will end up being a half inch wide uh, at, as well to match your connectors. Okay, so we've got a long strip like this. We're gonna fold it once more to hide those connectors, like so, or to hide those raw edges, like so. And we're just going to top stitch down that one full um, long edge that pops open there, all the way down that one log edge on both pieces. So right down there. I'm going to do a five and a half stitch length. I'm going to use an 18 needle um, and I have Tex 80 thread in today. 
All right, so I've got the handle up first. Remember, just that long folded edge this time. I'm gonna start with a little bit of a hump jumper since I use my zipper foot. Repeat on the next one. Then go ahead and grab your connector and top stitch down the two long ends, as I mentioned before. These will be folded over and sewn in, so I'm not worried about um, back stitching at the beginning or end. And a repeat on the next one. And take your D rings, insert the D, the flat side of the D ring, uh, <clears throat> and your vinyl wrong side looking up at that, looking up at you right now, <laughs> and then fold it in half. So all the raw edges are hidden, and just go ahead and place a clip at the end and set it to the side. Just slide it in. Okay, you're gonna want your two folded edges facing in on each other. You're gonna want your swivel clips and your strap ends and some rivets actually. Four, I believe I don't have those currently they're next to me but we're going to take our swivels and um, our two straps and we're going to treat them as one and slide them into the swivel and we're going to fold have that flat end facing there we're going to fold these over as she states in the pattern I hope you can see me. Oh, you can just barely. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and clip both sides. Sorry if my arm is in the way. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and make my mark as she tells me to. Then we'll come to the other end. And again, treating these two straps as one, we're gonna slide our swivel on and fold over. Again, clipping these on just so they don't go anywhere. Let's grab a hole punch and our rivets. All right, I've just got this Pro Master hole punch. I don't really care for it because of this grip right here. It really hurts my hands, but choose your appropriate rivet hole size and go ahead and punch holes. At your markings. Now that you have all four holes punched, you can grab four rivets. We need four posts and four studs. I always use the posts on the top 
side and the studs on the bottom side. Then we can set our rivets. Okay, now that those are set, I'm going to trim the end of my strap just a tiny bit so they match up. Grab our strap ends. I'm gonna use a magnet to catch all these uh, screws. So you're gonna take your strap end and just slide it into both straps. And then it's gonna sit on there like that. We're gonna take and fold this back and insert our screws now. I'm gonna use this little Stanley set I have. So just make sure that's firmly pressed all the way to the end. Hold those straps on there and insert your screw. Again, make sure that straps pushed, strap ends pushed all the way on there. Okay, I screw it in until it's like just flush. Looks like my screws or my rivets got a little crooked, but here we go. On the back, they're very crooked. And then repeat on the other one. And here is your very cool strap. Okay, go ahead and grab panel pack one. Out of that pack, grab your main panel, your facing, and a 13 inch piece of double sided tape. I'm using quarter inch. On the right side of your facing, two inches from each end, place your double-sided tape along the bottom or top or whatever. You want this really long edge. You know what, I'm just actually gonna fold this and match up the centers. And just put a little like eighth inch snip in the center. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, on this piece. This is the zippered facing. Okay, we'll pull our double sided tape off. Just the backing, not the whole tape. Match up those center clips that I just made. So that was just an easier way for me to um, center that. It's right sides together, remember? So you should now be looking at the lining side of your facing. It's hard to tell mine. And the right side of your main panel here. Now you need a ruler and some kind of marking tool and we're gonna make three quarters of a box. That's 14 inches long and centered. Can you see my box? I've got like horrible glares. I can't tell if you can see. And we're gonna stitch right on the line we just drew. Okay, I'm gonna go to a number four stitch length I'm 
I'm at the corner. I'm going to make sure my needle is starting to pull up some. Move my hand crank it until my needle's pulling up some so it doesn't skip a stitch. I'm going to pivot and then continue sewing straight down my line. Okay, my needle's starting to come up, so I'm going to pivot. All right. So now we're going to cut out that um, square we drew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the one side, cut up, pivot to that corner so I can snip into that corner but not cut the stitching. Then I'll cut the rest of the way down. Clip up into that corner and come over to the other side. And we've cut that out now. Okay, so now we need some double-sided tape. And I'm going to uh, mark my half inch away from the stitching and then I'm going to lay my double sided tape down. So I'm going to start in the corners now and pull the backing off the double sided tape and just a little bit of the beginning. I'm going to pull the tops apart from each other and fold it over itself, wrong side together, and get that pulled all the way back. And then I'm just going to put a clip on the other end here. And I'm going to come to the other end now and do the same thing. Pull those two apart and fold them back on the, on it them, themselves. Sorry. And we'll put a clip here. Then we can go ahead and remove the rest of the double sided tape backing. And starting at one corner, we're going to push our seam up and pull the facing back. I'm going to pull it just so I can see a little bit of the front panel poking out to ensure that you can't see any of the facing poking out. I'm just pushing that seam upwards and folding that facing back. All right, that should be nice and smooth and flat. All right, now you want piece number two and you want to take and trim it down to size, as she says in the pattern, on your heart side, that long angle over here. This is the front of my lining piece. This is that long heart angle. I have trimmed it down. I'm now going to take my zipper and I'm going to lay it on that long angle we trimmed down. I'm going to Make sure it goes all the way to the top. My one raw, uh, my one corner of my zipper here is all the way at the top corner up here. So we're gonna match it right there. And we can clip it in place. All right, then you want it to go all the way down. Well, you want to take your zipper the rest of the way down but it doesn't come all the way to the end. 
that's fine. You want it to do that. We're gonna base this on now, but we're gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. One quarter of an inch seam allowance is very important. A quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna base this on. And we are going to fold this over now. We're gonna fold this over to the back side and we're gonna press that down. Okay, we want it all the way folded over. Just that back edge, make sure your lining's pressed away from the back side of the zipper. And you wanna make sure you get that little extra bit folded down right there. All right, I'm gonna press this real quick. Um, I'm using the waterproof canvas, so I'm gonna press from the right side, the textured side I'm pressing from. And I'm gonna do a quick press, and that's gonna be it. All right, going back to the wrong side of your fabric, the right side of your zipper, you're gonna grab some double-sided tape again and put it down the length of your zipper. I'm gonna put it all the way to the edge of my zipper. Okie doke. Because I don't have my pull on, I wanna add that on now. So I'm going to just open up my zipper. This is the top. This wider edge than the bottom here. So that's, I'm gonna slide my pull on that rounded edge right on in there. All right, so there's that on. We're gonna grab that main panel we completed. Remove our double-sided tape. Then we're gonna position our main panel over the top of our zipper. The two sides and the bottoms should all match up. I'm gonna clip my zipper at the top to that top corner because there's no double-sided tape there. All, same, same thing for right here. Can we see those two? I clipped it up here, the zipper. Whoop, up here. Like so, and down here on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press that tape on, or that double-sided tape on, once everything's like lined up nicely. And then we're gonna top stitch this rectangle on all three sides. Make sure you pull that tape so it's lined up still. I'm gonna pivot and come down. Okay, your zipper pull should be at the top up here. And um, this is the front now. Go ahead and grab the last lining piece in your packet, which should be um, three. We're gonna take it right side up. Lay your completed main panel 
right side up on top of it. It should match. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and clip it in place. And we're going to baste down the zipper. Then we'll come over to the back. We've got piece three looking at us and we want piece two. We're gonna clip those two together. Just leaving the exterior alone right now. And we're gonna sew down the diamond and the triangle side. I'm gonna use a four stitch length and she has you use a five eighths of an inch seam allowance for this part. Back stitched at the beginning. <clears throat> I'm down to the diamond, the end of the diamond edge. We're going to pivot and we're going to come down the triangle edge, keeping that five eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to trim the, those seams down to an eighth of an inch. Here's what your panel looks like on the back side. Now we should have a bit of gap. All right, it's time for pack two. We are going to go ahead and grab our zipper and the zipper tabs from pack two. We're gonna set the tabs on the ends, matching up those short ends on each side. I'm going to do both right now. Probably didn't see me do either one of those, but I just put the uh, right side of my tab up against the right side of my zipper and clipped it together. Both ends are done. We'll take it to the machine. We're going to do a five, uh, four stitch length and a three no, a four stitch length and a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and then I'm gonna just pull that, um, flip that up so I can get to the other side. So I can just do a little chain here. Making sure to back stitch still at the beginning and the end. Okay. Then all we're gonna do is flip those, pull those away from the zipper and we'll top stitch down that folded edge on both sides. Again, I'll use a five and a half. And again, I'll just flip this around so I can just keep doing a little chain here. This is your completed zipper. Go ahead and fold that zipper in half, matching up your zipper tabs. and put a clip in there to find your center. Go ahead and grab piece six. And also um, your hashtag size, pound sign, whatever you wanna call it these days. And match up those two corners and find your center there. Just on that curved pound sign there. Okay, now here I'm going to derail from the pattern just a tiny bit. And I'm going to put my zipper pull 
to the left right now instead of to the right. She tells you do it to the right. I'm going to do it to the left. I'm going to match up those centers I made. And we're going to uh, put our zipper on this curved edge. I pretty much use just like three clips. Line up the end of my zipper um, tab and zipper to the end of the fabric and that usually lines up pretty good. There we go. Now it's the zipper tab to zipper tab. Okay, and then we'll base this on. Again, this is that curved piece and my pull is going over here instead of up at the top. Then we can base that on. This is what we have right now. Okay, go ahead and grab your piece four. This will likely be your contrast piece. If you wanted two, two tone bag. <clears throat> um, but this is gonna be on the front side. You match up your pound signs, sides. Pound side, side, sign, sides, whatever. And we will uh, stitch this together. I am clipping my zipper, or yeah, my zipper on. I just started by lining up the sides and the bottoms and then clipped on like that. It looks like I've got a bit of an overhang on both edges here. And we're going to stitch this in place. I'm going to sew with my lining panel face up so I can see my base stitch line just because. I'm going to use a four stitch length. Okay, piece six is attached to piece four. We're going to go ahead and trim the zipper ends only. See where my zipper begins right there? I'm not clipping that. Boop, right off to the side. So you don't clip any of your zipper. Looks like I got a little bit of mine actually. Don't do that. So right down to the zipper end there. So I did get just like a little bit of my zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and put some fire to that, melt the end again, just to make sure that doesn't unravel later. We can go ahead and flip this out now. I'm gonna take my exterior piece and pull it away from the lining. We could probably go ahead and give it a press if you're using cotton. Then take the other end and fold it away. And then go ahead and I like to clip my two edges together. I usually do that with all my zipper panels of any kind, so I can pull them away as far as they're supposed to go. And now we're gonna top stitch this. Okay, five and a half stitch length. Pull those tabs away. Okay. 
Okay, smooth everything out. Make sure that lining's pushed back. Smooth it all out again. Make sure that lining's pushed back again. Go ahead and grab lining piece seven and we're gonna repeat the same process as before. You want that big curved area, zipper tab to zipper tab. It'll look kind of weird, like it does, it's not gonna match up properly. It's fine. All right, and then you grab um, piece five, pound sign, and match it all up again. Again, I'm going to start down here on this far corner and match it up. And then it matches down to there. So we're good here. Looks like anyways, we'll sew this now, just like before. Okay, piece five is sewn to piece seven. We're gonna trim the ends again, just like we did last time. Right, just as we did before, we're going to fold the exterior away. And kind of give that a little press, finger press, whatever. Okay, put your lining and exterior together like we did last time to make sure you've got that all pulled back good. Okie doke. Let's top stitch. Again, five and a half. Starting at the ends, all the way at the end, so you include that zipper tab area, pulling it apart, pulling it away from the zipper. Got to put the connectors on. It tells you to leave like three quarters of an inch overhang, so I'm going to match that up, nestle these in where she tells you. And clip it on. Do the same thing on the other one. And we'll base that on. I like to pinch my connector together down there so it doesn't, like the bottom layer doesn't stick out. Okay, she says never ever trim these connector ends. Don't trim those ends. You can trim the end by the connector, but not the connector ends themselves. You want to leave your, let's say, vinyl piece alone. In my case, I have a green one. That's actually done now and we need to grab pack three. Okay, this is an easy one because it's just taking your long slip pocket, folding it in half, right sides together, stitching around the exterior of the, po the pocket, those, all those raw edges, and leaving a, a turning hole. Then we're going to go ahead and trim that corner. Well, not that corner, all the corners.
Then we'll turn it right side out. I always like to grab the like far corners and push them out first. Push out all your corners. I'm going to top stitch across the top. I'm going to mark, lay my pocket out. And center it. I'll grab my hang tag, bring it over to the machine, and bait, or top stitch this pocket on. I'm going to use a five stitch length. Make sure you back stitch really good at the beginning. That's going to be a high stress point for your pocket. To the hole opening, so I'm going to insert my hang tag. Make sure you back stitch really good at the end of your slip pocket as well. And this one is all done. The top of your pocket opening goes along that top edge. Okay, grabbing panel pack four, your lining main panel, and your um, zipper facing and a ruler, measure up from the bottom. Lay your zipper facing. Measure up from your zipper facing. Get a pen and center a line that's five and a half inches long. Then we're going to draw another line above that. And we're going to sew along those two lines we just made. Okay, so we'll draw a stitch down those two lines. I'm going to use a four stitch length. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, do the second line. All right, now we're going to cut a line in the middle, stopping about a half inch before each end of stitching. And then after we cut that line out, we're going to go off to the side and clip into the corner pretty much without cutting into the stitching. You see where I'm at here? Okay. Then we're going to take that and fold it to the back. Give this a press. Okay, then grab your zipper and your two panels. Line up your zipper to the top of one of the zipper panels, and we're going to baste it on here. You want the zipper to be looking at you, 
and your zipper panel to be looking at you. Then we'll grab the other zipper panel and flip so you can get your zipper looking at you again and your zipper panel to be looking at you. Match up those two panels and the top edge of your zipper. Baste your zipper on again. Okay, so now you have two wrong sides and the right side of your zipper, two right sides and the wrong side of your zipper. If you haven't put on your zipper pull like me, you want to make sure your zipper panels line up at the bottom and slide your zipper on so it opens left to right the correct way or your preferred way. I prefer left to right. Then we can grab eighth inch double sided tape and put that on your zipper. I like to lay it flat both ways to put the zipper tape on. Oh, hopefully y'all could see me do that. I put the zipper tape on both edges here. Okay, so left to right. And here's our lining pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and flip so I can play with the bottom of my zipper pocket first. I took my double-sided tape off. I'm gonna lay my zipper flat. And then I'm going to center my pocket open my zipper opening over my zipper pocket. You should have probably a half inch on each side or so. Okay, I'm going to press that all the way down so it's nice and secure. I'll flip it, um, everything out of the way and get the top one. Pull that double-sided tape off and flip everything back in place. <clears throat> and then push this one down. But now I'm going to take this and flip everything back up the way I had it originally. So I'm working on the bottom. And the zipper pockets are up here, away from the lining of the bag. We're going to top stitch around or down this long edge here from about one eighth of an inch away from the edge and one eighth of an inch away from the corner. I'm not going to back stitch at the beginning or the end. Instead, I'm going to leave long tails and pull my thread to the back by pulling up those loops. and tying it off. So then I'm going to flip this pocket down and finger press the edge. Then I'll take the top and press that down as well. So starting in the stitch we left off in, we're gonna top stitch the rest of the way around. Our zipper panels are back down um, towards the bottom. 
and we're just going to stitch around. Again, I didn't back stitch at the beginning or the end. Ending in the stitch I left off in, I pull the threads and tie them off. I'm going to sew up the sides of the zipper pocket and close our zipper pocket um, only on the sides. All right, there's your zipper panel pocket. All right, because I have the zipper panel here already, I'm going to use piece nine first and piece seven. So here's piece seven and here's piece nine. We want to match up our diamond edges. So diamond edge to diamond edge here. Make sure you have nine and seven diamond to diamond, okay? We're going to stitch this down the edge at a five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you can trim down your seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. Go ahead and back pedal here and grab piece eight and piece six, which would be the slip pocket and piece six. We're going to go diamond to diamond again. Just diamond to diamond again. Okay. Diamond to diamond, five eighths of an inch seam allowance again. We can go ahead and top stitch both of those pieces. We're going to do it towards the main panel. The main panel is the one that we put the pockets on. The zippered pocket and the slip pocket, both of those sides. We're gonna fold the seam allowance to go over that way and put the top stitching on the main panel. And then here's the other one. So I'm just gonna keep on keeping on here. We've got some lining pieces sewn together. Big long lining piece now. Okay, now you have your main panel piece out and you wanna connect that long heart edge with the heart edge of piece four, your zipper panel. Heart edge to heart edge four, and uh, this is piece one, which technically has piece three written on the back of it. We'll clip that down. Yep. Okay, so kind of a tricky one for this one. Up at this connector end, we're gonna have a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then when we get down to the non-connector end, we're gonna do a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So 3 eighths of an inch all the way, I would say until like that zipper tab and then go 5 eighths of an inch. Up by the connector side though, three eighths of an inch only. Okay, I'm down to that uh, connector, non-connector end. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and scale up to that five eighths of an inch. I'm gonna trim where there's no zipper tape. So just the zipper tab area. So we skip top stitching this part and we go ahead and align the edge of piece 10 with the edge of piece 5. Hold on, I gotta grab 10. Alright, piece 10 heart side, piece 5 heart side, 5 and 10. We're gonna clip and do the same thing like we did before even including three eighths of an inch seam allowance up at the connector area and five eighths of an inch seam down at the other end. If you did this the way she has the directions written, you will have a zipper pull up on the left and um, Actually, I lied, on both sides. The way I did it, it's gonna have a zipper pull on each side. All right, let's go ahead and put piece um, one and piece five, um, which is not this one, it's one in, diamond to diamond. The edge, tip to the tip. We're going to do the same thing as before, and we're going to sew with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. No increasing or decreasing on this one. Trim your seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch. All right, then we're going to find 10, which was the this one and four at the diamond sides. I almost said square. This one's kind of turned to the side. Edge to edge, clip to clip, whatever. Three eighths of an inch seam allowance again. Um, open your zipper. I'm just gonna go ahead and do two zippers. You don't need to worry about that front panel zipper, but you can't do anything with that other one. Anyways, then you're gonna take piece um, 10 and piece one, and we're gonna match the triangles, and we're gonna sew across the bottom. Three-eighths of an inch one more time. You should have, like your um, seams should end up closing here. We're gonna go ahead and flip to the lining side. <clears throat> Got your zippers open. Uh, we're gonna put fine piece eight and seven here's eight and here's seven we're matching up those heart edges okay we'll sew that five eighths of an inch this time to pay to page to piece six and piece nine the heart edges here a clip and a five eighths of an inch seam. Can you all see how close that stitching line got to that one? 
it got really close. That zipper foot is really helpful. Okay, we're going to do this last piece, this last opening. It's the triangle edge of the lining side. We are doing a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance one more time. Okay, but we're only going to sew for about two or three inches. And then we're going to backstitch, skip a few, 99, 100. No, um, <clears throat> then skip it for a while to leave yourself a pretty big opening. Oops, sorry. And uh, come down to the other side, about two to three inches away from the edge and go ahead and sew this one. Five eighths of an inch seam. Remember that's pretty much overlapping um, those side seams. And we're gonna trim that seam allowance down just where we stitched only. All right, so now we have like that. Okay, then we're gonna come to the connectors ends and getting those pieces nice and flat, we're gonna sew across. I'm gonna sew from this side and I'll see that make up my mind. <laughs> okay, 3 eighths of an inch seam across this top here. Okay, and remember she said never clip this. So we're gonna cut that corner. We're gonna cut this corner. And then we're gonna try to cut out any extra bulk here. So it's pretty much just the connector. Go ahead and do it on the other side. Let's go ahead and turn out our bag through this giant opening. You know, I like to push my corners out first. Double check everything to make sure everything was caught properly. Push out my connectors. Um, open up our zipper pocket and pull the zipper pocket all the way out. And we're going to roll it down inside out. Then we're going to take and grab the zipper, I mean, sorry, the opening that's left here. and pull that out through the opening in our pocket. So as I've done on videos before, I'm going to start on one side and just clip this part as I'm going down. It's going to be roughly <clears throat> because you've got a big opening and a little zipper pocket, right? So just slow and steady, clip it on, clip it together. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry for my throat. I was doing fine and then I ate some food. All right, then we're gonna stitch this shut. In the stitch I left off on, so I should be at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Push that back through your zipper. 
the top stitch across this. I like to use a five and a half here, just in case I ever have to open the bag back up. It's easier to rip out. Last thing we need to do is install a rivet. So we just line it up, put it as far back as she tells us. Then we can use that same punch we used earlier and punch the holes in there. That should go through all your layers. You should have four, approximately four layers there. Two layers of connector, a front and a back. You need your last two rivets. And then you just need to clip on your strap. <clears throat> and here we are. Trouty.